students, I'm Anshul Sharma, your educator for paper one. So we have been discussing all the PYQs and the concepts related to it. So in today's video also, we'll be discussing few concepts related to communication with the help of the PYQs that I have for you. So let us see the first question. The first question is that the sequence of the steps in organizing the written material for communication is what? Evaluate, jot down points, construct an outline and then you describe. So what would be the correct answer? What would be the correct sequence when we talk about the written material for any communication to happen? So we all know that there are two types of communication when we talk about the words being used. That means the verbal communication. So sometimes it can be written, other it can be oral. So which is better? There are, there are of course do's and don'ts, plus and minus points in both these type of communication. Oral communication, you cannot consolidate this type of communication and you know that you cannot prove whatever you said when we actually orally communicate this, communicate something with another person. But when we talk about the written type of communication, we know that we can prove what we say whenever we talk about the written material or the written type of communication because everything is written and you can prove it. But the biggest problem is that Feedback becomes a very delayed concept whenever we talk about the written type of communication because you have, uh, you have to write it and there is a formal structure that is to be followed and the delayed of the feedback can occur. But in oral type of communication, the feedback is very spontaneous to and flow and it is quick. But let us see how actually you write down the points to communicate. Then what is, why do you think that writing the one thing that you want to communicate is so important? Whenever you write it in a proper sequential manner with the correct syntax, with the correct, you know, with correct order, you know that you are communicating and you are packaging your communication data in a proper manner. That means whatever you're trying to say would be very lucid and very clear to the other person whom you're trying to communicate with, right? So it becomes very imperative to write all the points and write everything that you want to communicate in a good manner. Now this is what UGC asks, how will you write this document in a good manner? What all are the points that you have to see? So the answer is B for us, that is C, A, B, D, E. So that means B, the first is C, you jot down the points. Then what do you do? A, you read them over. Then B, you evaluate that whatever you have read or whatever you are trying to communicate is right or not. This is the third point. Then you have the fourth point that is D, you construct an overview or an outline for whatever you have written or evaluated and at the end you will describe. Now this becomes the most important point because you are basically trying to do everything in a good manner so that you can communicate in a proper manner. So this is to describe in a good manner. Now let us see the explanation. So we know that the purpose of any business type communication is that you are actually here to present all your facts and all your ideas. So the purpose of any business writing is to communicate all the facts and all the ideas. So you try to communicate in a good manner so that all your points are delivered properly to the other person. In order to accomplish this purpose, each document has some key features and some key components that has to be presented in an order so that the reading audience can understand and can make this message clearer and can give you the feedback. So these are few steps. First of all, you jot down all the points. The first step in all this written material is to jot down the important points and the needs of the community of the uh, to be that are to be actually communicated to the sender. Then there is read over. You will read all of these things. The next step involves reading all the points that you have written and you have jotted down in the first step. You also see that you don't miss a point that you think should be added, right? So this is a step where you will see that any important point is missed or not. And if it is missed, you can add it back. If there is some duplication, you can delete it. Right. So whenever you are writing, of course, the course of your thoughts can change a lot of time. So writing it in a proper sequential manner is to be done. Then there is evaluate. You evaluate that all the requirements are fulfilled or not. Is something to be added? You can do it. 
is something duplicated you can delete it so here you will jot down and you will see that whatever you have decided are aligned to what you are trying to communicate or not then you construct an outline so the next step in this process of constructing the document is to see what was the purpose of communicating so is your purpose being met so you will construct an outline on the basis of this purpose this will help you getting all the ideas and the information to the right address this will help you communicate better and at the end you will describe the final step is to describe all the points and to describe in detail all the points that you want to communicate so this is the basic and the last step this is this actually comes down to be the main step as all the preparation of the communication is done for this purpose only this is the step this is the boiling step for which all the things you have done now we have two statements statement 1 and statement 2 and you have to tell me statement 1 is true statement 2 is also true or statement both statement 1 and 2 are false one is true but statement 2 is false statement 1 is false and statement 2 is uh, statement 2 is true so these are the two or three or uh, four options that you have to see and these are the two statements now let me read the statements so the communication is the process of transmitting a message from a source to an audience via a channel then to establish the commonness between the source and the audience is effective for the source of communication so what do you think should be the correct answer these two two statements are basically uh, the definition of communication so what is communication communication is to make something common so communication comes from this latin word communus which means to make something common and you always communicate something with the help of a medium so what should be the correct answer the correct answer is a both one and two are true now let us read the statements again and see so statement one says communication is the process of transmitting a message from a source to the audience using a channel so we all have done the elements and the process of communication and we know that there is always a sender and there is a receiver there is a message there is a medium that we have and this is the medium that will transmit the message so you would know that there can be formal and informal kind of operation or communications so if you are try uh, trying to see a informal kind of communication see two friends are talking so what will be the mode of communication that they are using what would be the channel it can be the telephonic conversation but in a formal structure email would be the correct option so here how you transmit you transmit it by using a channel a channel or a medium right so the first statement is correct then what is the basic purpose of communication the basic purpose is to establish a commonness between the source and the audience so that effectiveness of a successful communication can be seen so statement one says communication is a process of transmitting a message communication is the process through which the message moves from the sender to the receiver using a channel the process through which information is conveyed and interpreted between two or more people is basically an ideal type of communication then we have a channel or a medium is used to send the encoded message to the receiver thus statement one is true then we have statement two to establish a commonness between the source and the audience is an effective way to see the success of communication effective communication is the process where you exchange the ideas the thoughts the knowledge and the information in such a way that the goal and the intentions of a person are actually met best to one's ability and you do it to the best of one's ability you try to communicate in the most good in the, in the best manner that, that you can right so the essence of an effective communication is to convey the sender's intended message to the receiver communication is always a two way process in which both the listener and the sender must work towards establishing a commonness it's like a group work between these two so the commonness between the receiver and the sender enhances the success of our communication so the second statement is also correct that means a would be the correct answer both our statements are true then we have another question 
these are the communication of paradigms that we have and there is description. So, we have encoding, decoding, intentionalist, we have perspective taking and we have dialogism. So, there are some descriptions at the other side. The first is realistic imagination of others view. Participants are autonomous and information processor. Then you, then you have the third one that is conveying communication as a process that uses language. Then the fourth is purposeful use of language. So, what do you think would be the correct description for the given amount of or the given number of paradigms? So, the right answer is B that means A would be joined to 3 and B to 4. Let us see. A would be joined to 3 that means encoding and decoding. So, what do you mean by encoding and decoding? First of all, let us join and then we will see. So, encoding and decoding A would be joined with 3, B with 4, intentionalist. Then we have C to 1 that means perspective taking. They are the realist people and then we have dialogism that means the two participants talking to one another. Now, let us see how do we come to this type of answer. So, the, what do you mean by encoding and decoding? So, we know that these two are the elements of communication and encoding means packaging the communication and decoding means trying to understand it. So, what do, you, what do we actually mean by this? We are trying to convey the message as the process that uses the language. So, by, uses, by using the language, we are trying to encode and then decode the communication. So, I am trying to communicate something with you. So, whatever I am talking, I am using a language, a source. This is my way of encoding and packaging it using English because I know that you guys are familiar of that language. I will encode all these things in such a manner so that you can understand the, uh, the, uh, the whatever I am talking. That means encoding and decoding are working parallel to one another and here the transmitting of the message would happen and you always use a, a language for this. Then there is intentionalist. Intentionalist is they already have a intention to communicate. That means they are communicating that is purposeful communication. So, this is the purposeful use of language. You purposefully use one language to communicate whatever you are trying to say and using it in effective manner is encoding and decoding. Then you have perspective taking. These are the realist imagination of the other's view. So, you know that you are talking in a realist sense and the other person would understand it. So, that is perspective taking. You have already considered the perspective. Then we have dialogism. Dialogism is participants are autonomous information processors. So, dialogism is comes from the word dialogic conversation. So, there is a dialogic, there are some views that would come and the participants would autonomously engage with that kind of communication. Now, let us see the description. So, we have encoding, decoding. Encoding means creating a message and decoding means the listener and the audience are using that encoding message. So, decoding means interpreting the message. Right? So, we have encoding and decoding. It is conveying communication as a process that will use a kind of language. Then we have intentionalist. This paradigm highlights the danger in which the individuals can misconstruct each other's communication intentions. So, it is very important that you use a purposeful use of language so that you don't uh, dis, you, you don't, uh, you're not talking something that can offend the other person. So, in a multicultural communication process or an intercultural communication process, you know that you have to use your language in such a manner that it is realistic, it is proper and you know that all all the intentions are met. You don't offend another person. You don't misconstruct the language. Then perspective taking to be understood by a specific audience, you should con consider their perspective also. In order to comprehend and understand all these things, you have to understand the specific audience 
whom you are talking to. They must take into account what the audience does and does not know. So before coming to my class, I know that my audience already know about the basic definition of communication. So I cannot keep on telling them what is communication. Rather, I can move one step further. So this is perspective taking. Or maybe I am talking about some theory of communication and I know these things are not clear to you. So I, I will be coming to this class with a kind of explanation so that I can make the things clear. This is taking perspective. Then there is dialogism. Dialogism in contrast recognizes the multiplicity of perspectives and voices. So there are so many multiple uh, perspectives and multiple voices. So whenever I'm trying to say when there are two or three or more people involved, there it is it is like a dialogic conversation that is happening. And for that dialogic conversation, I should know that none of you are offended, all of you are considered properly, all the intentions are met and I know how to recognize the voices. So it is referred to as double voiced or multi voiced. It is actually a principle which can become the main reference point that all the particular aesthetic fields are involved. All the particular aesthetic field becomes important. Each and every one of you holds importance here. The participants becomes autonomous information processors. So you will process the information that I am trying to give you, but that should be in a correct manner. Right? Now another question. To identify the sequence of human communication skills, there is public speaking, group interaction, relationship, feed forward and then there is self-representation. So how do you start to communicate? We are talking about the human communication skill. So communication is basically a skill. It is a humane skill and each and every one of us use communication to create a social contract, social relationships with the other person. So what is the sequence that we follow? It is D, that is E, C, V, A, D. E, C, V, A, D. That means we have the self-representation, we have relationship, Then we have B, that means the group interaction. Then we have A, public speaking. And at the end, there is feed forward. Now let us see the explanation first. The task that makes up a group public performance eventually include communication skills. Today, communication is very crucial for both the professional and the daily life activities. So, this effective communication aids are to be used so that the understanding of the others and our environment can be done. It aids that in overcoming the differences and fostering a mutual respect is needed and communication would help us do all of these things. It will help us to create trust, establish a favorable circumstances for creating a good social contract with another person. Hence, for resolving all these issues or creating a good concept, you require communication. So, there are few set skills of communication. What all are these? First of all, there is self-representation. It refers to how people attempt to know themselves or to project themselves. So, self-representation refers to how people attempt to present themselves in control or to shape how the other people would view them. So, what is self-representation? I have to self-represent myself so that I know the audience would perceive me in that manner. So, this is self-representation. After this self-representation is done, I will try to create a good relationship, an amiable relationship with the other person. So, after expressing yourself and creating your presentation or presenting your viewpoint, after self-presentation, the person establish a good relationship and try to create good cordial relations with the other person. So, after I have clarified or, tell, um, you know, or told you about myself, then there would be a relationship created. Then there are group interactions. This refers to a more dynamic team activity. In this way, individuals work in a group and would communicate with one another. So hence, there would be self-representation. After that, my relationships would improve. Then 
group interactions would start to follow and then there would be public speaking. So public speaking is a kind of soft skill that you all should know. Public speaking requires an excellent communication skills. There is enthusiasm and other abilities so that you can engage with the audience. These soft skills are interpersonal skills they are less technical and they are more about how do you interact with the other person so how do you talk do you make them feel welcome comfortable and all these things are involved when we talk about a public communication skill then it is feed forward an element or a passage whatever you are saying that is within the control system that transmits a controlling signal from the source to load somewhere else in its external environment is called as the feed forward. So feed forward is when I am delivering whatever I know that is feed forward that is I will tell you what I know. So what is basically how can you come to this answer whenever you are you know you are talking to a few people so there this is a public interaction. So what will you first do you will come on the stage and you will tell about yourself you will introduce yourself so this is the very first step that is the self presentation self representation you're talking about yourself then what will happen you will uh, come into contact with the other person so there is an establishing of relationship what you are talking why the audience should be interested to listen to you then there will be a group interaction the best person who uh, the best stand up comedian is someone who cracks joke and also interacts with the audience so that means engagement is to be done so there is group interaction then there is public speaking so you start to talk you start to involve the other person there is enthusiasm involved in this and at the end you will deliver what you are here to deliver right then which of the following is important for the intercultural communication valuelessness then there is absence of respect power distance individualism and gendered roles so what all are the qualities that are important whenever we talk about intercultural communication so what is intercultural communication it is communication between two cultures that is you value the other culture as much as they value your culture so this is intercultural communication so what would be the correct answer it would be c that means c d and e now let us see this is the correct answer how the importance that we have hold of all these things in intercultural communication do you think valuelessness is important or value is important so you have to value the other culture or you have show you have to show valuelessness that means this becomes incorrect so a wherever you find a you will cut it out then b absence of respect you have to respect the other culture you have to respect their opinions their needs their customs and their way of doing all these th all the other things that you do that means the b can also not be the correct answer so wherever you have b you can strike it out hence you come up with this right answer there should be a power distance there is always a power dynamic situation that is there and will be there so there should be a good amount of distance and a powerful distance individualism is always to be followed you should respect the other person as the individual and they would respect you as an individual so individualism is always to be followed and gender roles will also change as compared whenever we talk about the cultural perspective gender roles would also change individual would also change so individualism gender role and power distance are something that you have to look whenever you're trying to communicate and you want a good intercultural communication so the definition of intercultural communication or interpersonal communication is ongoing exchange and information resulting from the past events and the past acts to the parties involved in the intercultural communication people from one culture attempt to understand the information being sent by someone from another culture and this is called as the intercultural communication so there are various elements whenever we talk about intercultural communication that are to be noted there is epistemological diversity you know that it is you, india is a country about universe uh, unity in diversity so there are a lot of people and each and every one are individuals so their individual value is also to be taken care of hence we know that it is an 
epistemological diversity and everyone is welcome. Then there is a power distance. A good amount of power distance is always there. Identity and ideologies are always there. Each and every one has uh, his or her own individuality and ideology. Then there are inter uh, intercultural language education. There is a different language that is involved. Then intercultural communicative competencies and awareness. You have different different awareness and different different competencies. So to come on the common ground, which is the most important thing, it is the mutual respect. So with mutual respect, you can come on the same ground. Then there should be a good repo. There should be individualism between you. Intercultural and global citizenship, that is very important. Digital communication is bringing the intercultural communication one step further. All of these things, whenever you follow all these things, your intercultural communication would improve. Then there is always migration, multiculturalism, multilinguism uh, uh, and there is super diversity that are involved. Then there is the workplace communication that can bring different cultures together and there are different set of gender roles that are also there. So, intercultural communication has the potential to lead to a lot of conflicts and there can be intercultural misunderstandings. And this is the problem that has to be forgotten. And how can you do that? Whenever we talk about intercultural communication, you, you always see that there are always individualism that are maintained. So, because of individualism, there can be a lot of problems. And you have to see that, we, yes, individualism is to be respected, gender roles are to be maintained, but you cannot fight with other person. There is always a power distance that will come into, uh, come into play and you have to create that power distance in a proper manner. So, whenever we talk about a good communication system, there is all of these various elements involved in it and you have to take care of all these things so that the communication can be in a good manner. There, all this thing, you know that all these things will have no value on your intercultural communication. The importance would be that you have good, fall, you know, you have fixed gender roles, but you know that you have to respect the other gender also. Then there is individualism. Yes, you are an individual, but you respect the other person's roles as well. Then there is a power distance, but you know that you cannot demean the other culture. Then comes all of this. You know that there should be a good repo. There should be an intercultural uh, awareness so that with awareness you know that you will be able to follow what uh, and you actually you will be respecting the other person's culture as well. There is identity and ideology. You have to identify what the other person has an opinion, whatever his or her opinion is and whatever set of ideologies they have. Then there is some workplace communication. There are some digital communication that can promote intercultural communication. Good global citizen is someone who respects intercultural communication. And you know that there are fixed, there are situations like multilingualism and there is migration that are involved, which can uh, lead to the intercultural thing, uh, intercultural communication. But there are some linguistic barriers cultural diversity and ethnocentrism which can cause a lot of problem. So, what is ethnocentrism? Ethnocentrism is you demean the other culture. So, all of these things, the linguistic barriers, the language that you talk or the cultural diversity that come into play and you don't respect the other culture or if you think that your culture is more superior than the other culture. All of these things can create a lot of problem whenever we talk about the intercultural communication, right? So, I hope all these things are clear and you know this question is not saying that there should be some power dynamic between two people. It says that what is basically the importance being hold whenever we talk about intercultural communication, right? So, it is easy and I think we are done with the today's session. I hope you understood all these things. There will be some general questions, some questions that are very specific to your opinion. There can be people who think that, uh, you know, all of these things can be different as the perspective changes. But 
uh, UGC guidelines has to be followed and they always ask you questions which are um, you have to use your brain. So in communication and in teaching aptitude you find these type of questions. So I hope I made all these questions clear to you. They were very easy and if not you can write it in the comment section. Thank you so much for attending today's class. I will be back with another set of questions. We will be starting with environment, uh, questions related to environment as well. So thank you so much and keep studying and keep smiling. Thank you.